What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's your Earthmaster here on this beautiful Friday night, September 30th, uh, 2022. It is about 8.07 p.m. West Coast time, or not West Coast time, excuse me, Texas time, Central time, still out here in Texas. Um, latest earthquake activity shown some movement down in Southern California. Looks like right around the uh, grapevine with a 1.7 but I kind of want to go down here near the Anza area, uh, getting a pretty good swarm of activity along the uh, San Jacinto Fault Mountains, or the uh, Fault Zone. Let's see if I can pull that up here real quick. There we go. Uh, it's this little area right here where we're seeing a pretty good swarm of movement uh, over the last 24 hours uh, within this area. We got about, oh, about 41 earthquakes over the last 24 hours the largest one so far appear to be um, a 3.4 uh, there was a 2.3 just a short time prior to that uh, but since then we've seen quite a bit of swarming kicking up in the microquake department and that is again just off of the um it's on one of these san jacinto fault zone sections the anza section and there's a couple different segments here that branch off, but uh, that one's right smack dab on the Anza section, pretty active area. Um, not a whole lot going on through the San Andreas Fault right now, so kind of uh, just watching the SoCal, uh, SoCal area with that. Um, kind of tired out here again today, but uh, it's all good. All right, uh, what do we got here up north around the Bay Area? A little bit of movement, it looks like around San Jose and along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Most of the interesting activity has been happening uh, well south of the area down around Southern Cal. We did have one earthquake up here around the Mount Shasta area. Looks like a 1.2 uh, right at the, looks kind of like, looks like it's right at the southern base of the volcano there at Mount Shasta. Not a big earthquake, but uh, definitely uh, worth noting. 7.4 kilometers below the surface. Uh, for that earthquake there in Northern California. Uh, not a whole lot going on throughout the uh, Oregon area. Got one little earthquake there around Mount Hood. Aside from that, uh, things somewhat mellow up around the Washington area as well. Um, just a couple small microquakes throughout the region. Uh, working our way east over here, Yellowstone is kicking up uh, pretty nicely. Um, pretty good swarm of activity actually kicking up. About 32, 32 earthquakes reported from the USGS over the last 24 hours. And we're gonna bring up the uh, latest map here from the Yellowstone area. These are all the seismograph stations there in the uh, Yellowstone region. And it looks like the swarm, uh, once again, confined here to the northwest corner of Yellowstone National Park. And there's quite a few of them in there, uh, quite a few small microquakes. And uh, believe it or not, USGS is uh, pretty much listing all of them. Uh, that's listed there on the uh, on the graphs and as you can see over here a lot of small microquakes nothing big going on just a, uh, a pretty good swarm it's actually been swarming here for about a month now off and on and um, it's continuing today uh, looking at the rest of the region here looks like we did have um, one separate uh, maybe a couple separate earthquakes here located around the southern end of the Yellowstone caldera. And uh, you can kind of see the more well-defined signature here around Lake Butte. Uh, kind of looks like that's where that uh, activity is kind of kicking up here. Also right around the Lake Yellowstone area, uh, seeing a 2.0 at uh, looks like 2245 UTC time. So uh, a little bit of activity kicking up there around Yellowstone today. And of course, we'll keep an eye on that as always. Uh, looking out throughout the rest of the country here, some movement down through Utah and also a little quake activity up north of me here into Oklahoma uh, near the Dover, Oklahoma area. looks like a 2.1. Uh, nothing really kicking up here in Texas, a little bit of quake activity outside of Pecos. But aside from that, uh, things pretty quiet in Texas right now. Uh, some movement around the New Madrid fault zone as well, it looks like. Uh, one right smack dab on it, a 1.6 there in Tennessee. Uh, yeah, so the rest of the country looks pretty quiet. I know we got uh, 
in over here along the eastern portion of the country, stirring things up in the weather department. And uh, doesn't want to go away, but hopefully it will. Seen quite a bit of damage here in Florida recently from the uh, hurricane going through that area. Not good. All right, let's see. we got a pretty good swarm of activity here around the Puerto Rico Trench, uh, just south here and right around the British Virgin Islands. Got about 19 earthquakes or so within, the, within this entire region. And more, a little bit closer look here shows getting some upper threes uh, in this area of the Puerto Rico Trench. Deepest one so far looks to be a uh, 3.4 at 58 kilometers deep. And uh, I believe this area is definitely a major seismic uh, hazard zone uh, across this area of the subduction zone, this trench area, uh, capable of producing a pretty large earthquake. It's been quite a while since we've had anything on this area of the uh, trench, but uh, something to note there with that uh, little bit of ongoing activity around the Puerto Rico trench today. Off the coast of El Salvador, seen a 5.2. I believe this one here was from... Uh, uh, early, much earlier this morning time frame. So not a whole lot of movement uh, kicking up as far as newer activity goes around the Middle America Trench. Uh, see South America area. Got uh, some movement down here, looks like. A 5.3 coming in. That was from last night. And uh, see what we got as far as recent activity. Not a whole lot. Looks like this morning seen a 4.0 in the Chile area. But aside from that, uh, things pretty minimal along the South America region for now. Uh, getting a swarm of activity around the Tonga area and also the Kermadec Trench. Notice a pretty good sequence of earthquakes here. Over the last 24 hours, at a 4.9 at uh, about 82 kilometers deep. And then uh, a more recent 5.0 just upstream. You know, sometimes we see these back-to-back uh, -back earthquakes, deeper movement uh, does trigger much shallower earthquakes upstream around the uh, subduction zones and that's exactly what we've seen here today deeper earthquake first uh, and then followed up by uh, some some uh, earthquake activity more at the surface levels there's been a uh, little bit of deeper activity here uh, along the entire trench zone so might want to watch this area upstream for some possible larger movement uh, more so than what we've seen here earlier uh, this afternoon, that 5.0. Uh, let's see here. That activity, let me see when that was. That was actually, uh, kind of looks like that came in late last night time frame. So the majority of this stuff is old here. But uh, either way, uh, you can see what's going on here along the uh, subduction zone with that uh, movement. Papua New Guinea. That one, an old one as well. Looks like that should be dropping off the map here pretty soon. Uh, let's see what we got here around the northern end of the Java Trench. Uh, this one's somewhat recent here. Looks like earlier this afternoon time frame. A couple fives, including a uh, 5.9 in the Indonesia area. Uh, a couple fives brewing up here in that region, so... Got to watch that area pretty closely there of the Java Trench. That's a major play in producing uh, some much bigger quakes. Uh, let's see what else we got. Not a whole lot going on further west. Things look pretty quiet and dry as far as the earthquake activity goes. Uh, Northern Atlantic Ocean still seeing some movement up there around the Rick James Ridge. Uh, South Sandwich Trench is quiet tonight. So just a couple, a couple hot spot zones we're watching. West Coast. And uh, looks like Puerto Rico area keen up uh, more recently. All right, the Big Island, a couple earthquakes uh, around Pahala area, it looks like. Still getting a pretty good swarm of movement here around the, uh, um, wow, that's actually increased dramatically uh, throughout the day today. I've been pretty busy driving all over the place, so really haven't had a chance to do a, uh, a, a little bit earlier update. But we got 96 earthquakes here at the um, Mauna Loa area. That's a pretty good swarm. And it uh, looks like that is definitely continuing up to this hour. Right around the uh, Mauna Loa, two separate regions. So we've got one over the crater and we've got some, uh, an area just to the west here. 
it looks like a little separate swarm and this activity is deeper uh, down there at about four kilometers or so notice the movement over here on top of the crater on top of the volcano itself um, much more shallower but we're getting that deeper movement here which could be a sign of some some magma movement getting ready to uh, possibly um, fuel up the Mona Loa area so we're going to watch it pretty closely want to see if there's been an update yet from the uh, uh, USGS hands notification system uh, it's pretty cool in terms of monitoring volcanic activity we want to go to the HVO which is the Hawaiian folks and it doesn't look like they put anything out um, they put out the weekly update uh, but that was uh, much uh, much much earlier it looks like so nothing really new uh, we'll see if they put anything out a little bit later tonight maybe tomorrow far as um, any new notification goes so just got to watch that. Swarming pretty good. And let's see what have we got. Pahala area kicking up as well as normal. Uh, typical swarm in that area. Let's see what we've got up here along the big island or the uh, Alaska region. Got to bear with me here a little bit. Uh, here we go. Let's see what we've got. A little, little swarming activity up here outside of Anchorage, north of the Cook Inlet area. Notice this movement right here where we did see a 4.0. And uh, some other smaller aftershocks kicking up there today. Uh, Cook, yeah, Cook Inlet looks pretty active. The rest of the Aleutian Trench, pretty minimal. Not a whole lot kicking up right now. As far as Japan goes, uh, just a couple smaller uh, quakes there within that region today. All right, let's go ahead and check out the Tremor map here. Uh, and that is from yesterday, or actually the last 30 days. <laughs> Let's bring up the uh, PNSN trimmer map. This is real time, it looks like. We'll go ahead and key this up. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go. So, wow, okay. They're showing zero, eight, seven, six. So, but technically, it's six o'clock back home. It's very possible they may have not put out a uh, the readings for today. keep forgetting that I'm two hours ahead of my normal home time right now. But, uh, yeah, they're showing zero epicenters of tremor, which I find that kind of hard to believe because yes, yesterday we had actually quite a bit of tremor activity kicking up. I had about 266 epicenters of tremor, and that was uh, right around the Oregon area an area we're watching uh, uh, pretty closely because there's been quite a bit of trimmer over the last couple of weeks, uh, mostly confined to the uh, the Oregon region, which is the, uh, about the midsection there of the Cascadia subduction zone. All right, let's check out Solar Ham real quick, and uh, we'll get this on. Looks like a little evil face here. A couple eyes and a little mouth there from those coronal holes. All right, we are forecasting, or at least these guys are forecasting a... Uh, Potential G2 class storm uh, looks like on the uh, the first time frame, and that's going to be UTC time of October 1st. Should be kicking up right around the um, 6 to 12 UTC time. So that could be, uh, I believe, late afternoon, right? Let me see here. Yeah, that could be um, could be later tonight actually, because we're entering into the UTC time of October first, um, right now. So look for that potentially later tonight. Uh, the conditions it may be running a little bit late too, but looking at the current conditions, uh, we did have a little bit of amplification here um, earlier this morning time frame. Uh, but it's since died down, so um, I don't think it's missed us. But uh, either way, they're forecasting that a little bit later tonight for the G2 uh, class storm. 75% chance at the higher latitudes, 40 at the mid. And it looks pretty active over the next couple nights as far as that uh, potential for auroras go. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. 
and uh, again it's kind of hard to exactly predict when these things are going to hit uh, this is just the forecast here that these guys are putting out over the next couple nights um, flaring activity we did have a low grade M flare kickoff it actually looks like we had a couple of them um, earlier this afternoon time frame seen uh, looks like two M flares let's go ahead and see exactly where these are coming from um, looks like an M 2.9 which kicked up on a far side sunspot um, AR 3112 and uh, that is on the northeastern side of the sun. Just barely see it peeking over here, uh, turning into the Earth view. So it uh, looks like that could be a very active sunspot reaching into the, uh, or turning into the Earth view. We'll definitely keep an eye on that area. Uh, these other sunspots over the last couple of days have been pretty minimal. Not a whole lot of uh, uh, exciting activity, but keep an eye on 3112 as that rotates into view. The latest imagery over here shows a pretty large sunspot. So we'll uh, definitely keep an eye on the magnetic field and see what it wants to do as it rotates into view. All right, guys, have a good night. I'm uh, going to bounce out of here, and um, we'll definitely chat with you guys a little bit later tomorrow. I'll probably upload uh, maybe some video a little bit later tonight of uh, what I've been up to throughout the day today. So look forward to that. We'll chat you guys tomorrow sometime. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. It is Friday night and a lot of crazy people, even out here in Texas. Take care, folks.